Uh, well, uh, I think it's our fifth collaboration and uh, wow, times fly. Uh, hello again uh, with the Let's Graduate, Ms. Farah Farshouk and Dr. C. Uh, today we're going to talk about the um, monsters of the space and the uh, black hole. Uh, why, why they are really fascinating. Is it that difficult to do a black hole? Is it common? And I know that um, we, we will have a lot of uh, uh, um, examples and questions. Uh, I'll do my best. I'm not a specialist of black holes, but this is why uh, I have uh, Dr. Sa'ar Ziyad Sa'ar, I hope that he joined us now, uh, to talk more about the cosmology, uh, cosmology part. Hello, Muhammad. Actually, Dr. Ziyad Sa'ar is, uh, I hope that he is here. Um, uh, Dr. Ziyad Sa'ar is, the only Arab cosmologist in the Arab Middle East. So uh, maybe we will have a talk uh, with him about the cosmology formation of the universe, what was before the Big Bang, what is the Big Bang, expansion of the uh, universe. So for now, I will, I will go to start and please uh, be patient when I share stuff and, and things because you know, technical stuff always, we can have problem with them. So let us, um, what is here? Is it here? It's here. So just tell me if you are. Are you seeing any something shared? Yes, thank you, Joe. So what are you seeing shared? Mm. Okay. I'm not able to share. Right. Uh, let me see. Are you seeing it? Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So um, let us talk about the uh, black holes. And um, I really want to encourage you to go to Let's Graduate, uh, all the uh, sessions, all the education. Let's Graduate. Um, is a, is a so I'm very happy and I'm very proud to work and to collaborate with Let's Graduate Edu and uh, uh, Ms. Farah Fashul. So let us go now to the black hole. Uh, black hole always fascinated everyone. And if we look, if we look at the, uh, um, the history of the black holes, started, if you see from the uh, small robot on the down left, uh, you have a robot talking about the black hole since 1979. And you see that they are really very uh, movie and Hollywood uh, at attractive and they attract a lot of subjects. You see that we have also black holes from the 80s, from the 90s. And of course, there is the movie. Uh, I think that a lot of you uh, already observe it, saw it, discuss it, uh, understood it or not, uh, Interstellar. And uh, why that amount of, uh, of fascination uh, with the black holes? So uh, to, to know this, let us start from the beginning of the, of the stories, from uh, the uh, formal foundation of the general theory of relativity done by uh, uh, Einstein. Uh, and we see here the, uh, sc um, a screenshot of his paper, scientific paper, the first attempt to talk about uh, relative uh, general theory of relativity. And after this, uh, he started in 1916 and he published the paper for the general relativity. So what are we talking about? Well, uh, before Einstein, before Einstein, we had Sir Isaac Newton, who uh, really uh, talked about the gravity, the interaction between the mass, the gravity, and the distances, F is equal G M1, M2 over R square. And then, Isaac Newton, Sir Isaac Newton, spoke about relativity, but in the mechanical classical way. Means that if you are in a train, you can say that you are moving fast, 20 kilometers per hour, with respect to something. So there's a reference. And this is how uh, Einstein started to think about a relativity in the gravitational way, the general theory of relativity. And and he thought that if 
if the uh, gravity is heavy and is influencing the motion, so maybe there is something else. He discovered that if it is heavier and heavier, if we compress the matter, we can compress space and time. So we have ripples. And this is how he started to think about mathematical way to compress in a heavy and a dense way to influence the space and time. So he uh, entered, he put, he plugged the time within the space, which was X, Y, and Z. But the idea, this idea of something very dense started with the 17th century, 18th, uh, 18th century, and it was really studied also, meanwhile, if you want, with Karl Schwarzschild, uh, who was really, he died uh, in the 1960, 16, the, the year when uh, Einstein published his relativity, general relativity. So Karl Schwarzschild did a lot of studies for those compressed things, uh, and he's a German astronomer. Uh, he gave a modern idea for the black holes and uh, um, what, what general relativity of Einstein said. So, having presented this, this is uh, always, uh, this is an art uh, painting from uh, Ahmad Jabakanji. He did it specifically for the uh, Let's Graduate Conference for today. He painted um, uh, numerically yesterday. And uh, you will see a lot of imagination about black holes because one, they are, huge, far, they change the law, the physics law, they are really dense, that the light cannot get out of it, and we will see how they are formed later on, and because we don't observe them. And this is not true what I'm saying, because we observed it a year ago, a year and a month ago, we really had a direct observation of a black hole. So this is why you will see a lot of imagination where science and painting will mix together. So um, you see that uh, this is also a simulation and a scientific painting from Jean-Pierre Luminet to, uh, uh, to show or to illustrate the black hole. We always see that we have light around the black hole and something that is black uh, inside of that point. And we have the light that is not, um, uh, that is not symmetric. And this, is, this, is, uh, this has a meaning and uh, uh, a value, physical value, why they are not symmetric. So let me just now, before speaking about the curvature, let me tell you how a black hole is formed. Black holes, the universe forms in a great way black holes. It's a machine of forming black holes. It depends on the initial mass of the star and if they are binary or not. Let me start by quite massive stars. They will live their life and maybe we will talk um, another time about the life of stars because I'm not going into details now. So they live their life and they expel things and they stayed at the end uh, at a white dwarf. It's a state of, um, of a star or, or, or whatever is a star that is really used the helium, hydrogen and all the shells. If this white dwarf is with another star rotating, normal star that is feeding it, will explode after like billion of years and will do a supernova. And we have another type of stars that they are so big, like 20 solar masses, 30 solar masses at their age, they will completely compress and then will do the explosion of supernova. Okay. What will happen after this explosion? We have three types of things that will be left. After the great explosion of supernovae, we can have a neutron star. If the initial mass is not that big, we can have a pulsar star, pulsating star. It's like a neutral star, neutron star, but it is pulsating. And we have the third thing. If the initial mass of the star is huge enough, we will have what is left, a black hole. And the black hole is a leftover of an explosion at the moment where it is three solar masses. 
So it has to have a volume, a mass, and a density left off. For example, if we have, uh, I don't know, sun, and we want to compress it in a way to have a, um, to have a black hole, it will be really so small to have the density fair enough to not let anything escape off. But the sun will not be a, a black hole. So when you have this amount of dense material, so imagine that you put your sun in a, uh, in a small tennis ball. All the sun, you compress it. So you will see that the density is huge. And then they defined also when it is very huge, this huge amount of density of ball will have limits. And this limit, we, they will call it at that time in the 19th century, 20th century, the event horizon. So the event horizon is the limit when it is impossible to see anything going out from the a black hole or inside to go inside the black hole. And to continue to express in expressing the um, Einstein uh, gravitational uh, theory, uh, relativity, general relativity, so we see that if we have the sun rotating around uh, in the space and everything is rotating around it, with the classical physics, we knew that we have the planets rotating around the sun with an elliptical way. But with, with Sir Isaac Newton, we were not able to understand why the reason of the gravity. And here then, Einstein, when he said that everything that is very dense will curve the space, the more density you give, the denser you are, the very well curved, um, deeply curved the space is. So imagine that you have a marble, and you throw it around the space on the left image, it will rotate at a certain point that if you arrive to this ring, rim, black rim, will be absorbed by the gravity of the uh, black hole. So I will show you now how the black hole, it's just a four minute or three minutes uh, a small simulation movie, how the black hole can rip the space. So bear with me. I will stop sharing this. If you want to ask a question now, you can ask. So, okay. Uh, let us go here. And Dr. Ziad Sa'ar, are you here? Dr. Sa'ar, if you're here, just uh, say yes. Yes, I am. Oh, great, great. So, um, you saw... You saw that we started by the definition and, okay? Yes, good. Great. So let me share this movie. It's, uh, why it's not opening? Okay. What is a gravitational? I will share it from here. So when you have, when you put the uh, PDF style, it's very difficult to, all right. It's a ripple in the fabric of space and time. Imagine that space is a giant sheet of rubber. Things that have mass cause that rubber sheet to bend, like a bowling ball on a trampoline. The more mass, the more that space gets bent and distorted by gravity. For example, the reason the Earth goes around the sun is that the sun is very massive, causing a big distortion of the space around it. If you just try to move in a straight line around such big distortion, you will find yourself actually moving in a circle. That's how orbits work. Is not an actual force pulling the planets around, just a bending of the space. Gravitational waves are produced whenever masses accelerate, changing the distortion of space. Everything with mass and or energy can make gravitational waves. If you and I started to dance around each other, we would also cause ripples in the fabric of space and time. But these would be extremely small, practically undetectable. Now, gravity is very weak in the scale of other forces in the universe. So you need something really, really massive moving very, very fast to make the big ripples that we can detect. How would you observe a ripple in space? If the space between you and me stretched or compressed, we wouldn't notice it if we had made marks on our metaphorical rubber sheet, for example, using equally spaced rocks, because these marks would also get stretched further apart. But there is one ruler that doesn't get stretched, one made using the speed of light. If the space between two points gets stretched, then light will take longer to go from one point to the other. And if the space gets squeezed, light takes less time to cross the two points. This is where the LIGO experiment comes in. 
that has four kilometer long tunnels and uses lasers to measure the changes in the distance between the ends of the tunnels. When a gravitational wave comes through, it stretches space in one direction and squeezes space in the other direction. By measuring the interference of the lasers as they bounce between the different points, physicists can measure very precisely whether the space in between has stretched or compressed. And okay, so I will stop sharing this. We saw the ripples uh, made by the gravity, we saw the interaction, and we saw what happens if two black holes or neutron star or whatever very dense will move together. Why I'm showing you this? Because it is one of the methods that confirmed the gravitational wave. We will talk about it later on. So let us go back to my uh, presentation and let me share it here. I don't know why it's not. Are you seeing anything shared? Okay, thank you. So how we define a, a black hole, if we are going to, to speak inside the black hole, the definition, the characteristic of a black hole? Um, well, basic structure of a black hole is very easy, actually. It's not that, that mysterious. So we have something that is very dense. We have an event horizon, the limit uh, where we cannot escape even the light. And we have something that is called the singularity. So the singularity is, imagine that something that is very, very dense, the density will um, attract, will do the gravity. And because you are in a 3D dimension, everything will go down the singularity. It's a point where all the matter wants to go and attract it to, which is we don't know what is exactly. Maybe Dr. Ziad Sa'er will talk about it uh, later on. But uh, is there any singularity? Is there any possibility, physical possibility to have a point? All the matter has a point. And, and there are some uh, uh, characteristics for the uh, black hole. The black hole are not just one types, two types, or three types. Imagine that you have a rotating black hole, non-rotating black hole. So we have what we call the primordial black holes. They have masses comparable to the Earth, less or minus, and they are hypothetical. And we have the stellar black holes that they come from the death of a star and core collapse. And we have the intermediate masses black hole that they are a few thousand solar masses and the supermassive black holes. But maybe you know, or maybe you don't know that those are not always the black holes. It's not just the universe that is feeding us black holes. And those are not just the characteristics of black holes. They are, they have probability, property of rotation and charge. So we divide them also to types that the Schwarzschild black hole, they are static, not moving. The Kerr black hole, they are more realistic scenarios. They are rotating, but without any electrical charge. And the charged black hole, charge rotating and charge unrotating. So now you know that we don't have just a mass that is collapsing and we have just one type of black holes. We have a lot of uh, uh, type of black holes. And this is what will happen if we go, uh, another artistic view for a black hole, this is what will happen if we go uh, to near to the black hole or if they have two masses that they are moving together. And you see that we are doing the ripples in the space. What will happen also is a change in the speed of light and the age. I don't know if you remember that when the interstellar movie, they went to this Gargantua, I will show it to you later on, uh, and they approaches a planet because the gravity is so huge, the time will be slower. For example, I don't remember if it is one hour or it is seven years, one hour on that 
uh, planet near the black hole, the event horizon, will be seven years on Earth. Then we will explain it together later on with Dr. Zia. So those rotating stars uh, near uh, each other will create this explosion. So how we discover, oh, here I will pause and I will tell you how we will discover the, um, stop sharing, oh, uh, how we discover the uh, um, black holes. So the black holes are not that black. They are called black holes, but we cannot observe them themselves, the, 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 the circle, the object. But we have direct and indirect method to discover the black holes. For the moment, like a year before, we had we have just the indirect method. The indirect method that consists on looking at a target in the space. And when you see that the stars are moving around a point in an elliptical shape and they increase their um, uh, speed, you can think about a very massive object that can be a black hole. And it's not emitting, it is a black hole. And we observe this several times. We have a new observation in, I think it is 1000 light year far from us. And it is called the HR19 uh, something. I will show it to you later on. And it was, confirm that it is a black hole because of the periodicity of those rotations. We will see it later on. So having said this, this is the indirect method to detect it. I will show you a small movie about the detection and the curvature of the space. So um, the curvature of the book. Open. And I hope that it is opening. Yeah. Okay. and we will share it. So you will see that, share, okay. What are we observing here? We are seeing stars over the years at very high distances from us, and we are taking the position of the stars. You see that the end result of this motion for those stars is around a certain point that can be a black hole and it's not emitting. And after we study it and we confirm that it is a black hole. This is a very dear black hole to us. Who knows what is this black hole? Do you know where it is this black hole? Do Khuri. No? Okay, so it is the black hole of our uh, galaxy. It's towards, ah, you're searching. Uh, Joe is doing his, uh, his work, homework. Let me share with you again. The, oh, share. So we saw that it is rotating around that point, And this is our black hole in our galaxy. If you see in this picture, we are having the galaxy with the arms and at the heart of the center of the Milky Way, we have the black hole. And our uh, sun is located at the yellow point. So if to answer one of the question that uh, Ms. Farah Farshouk asked, how many black holes we have in the universe? So if in the, just in the Milky Way, we have more than 100 million black holes. So if we have millions and billions of galaxies, so I just let you do the calculation to see the number of black holes that we have. But those are not, I'm, I'm, I'm insisting, I'm not talking now about the small, tiny black holes. I'm talking about the universe black holes. So this is an observational image at the point where Sag Sagittarius A plus, A star, is located where our black hole is located. So on the left, it is the optical image, and on the right, it is the Chandra X-ray image. To continue uh, the observation and the discoveries of black hole, here we have um, uh, the second largest black hole as seen from the Earth. So we see those three observations uh, in the 
upper horizontal, in the down center, and in the right, uh, uh, in the colored. So we see that we have several attempts to observe the uh, uh, black hole in several wavelengths. So this, this black hole, this black hole that you are seeing, it is 